What's up guys? Thanks for clicking on my video. Hope everyone's doing good out there. Today we're going to be checking out the Human K1. I'd like to thank Mr. Davidson in the USA and Francisco in Spain for sending this gun to me for review. Same guys that brought you the Priest too. So very cool. If you do decide you want to buy one of these 2020 series Human K1s, Shoot on over to crazycool.com. Kelly over there is the one that clued me in on a lot of stuff on how to use this gun. He's the number one expert in America and the one to talk to for a Huben K1 sales and service here in the USA. If you live outside the US or you want to visit Huben directly, you can visit www.hubenairguns.shop or email them at info at hubenairguns.shop. So there's a lot to tell you guys about this gun. Let's just get right into it. It's available in 22 and 25 caliber. It's a hammerless regulated PCP rifle, semi-automatic. It's got an integrated 19 round magazine and it shoots 80 foot pounds in 22 caliber. That is at least twice as much as anything else out there. It's designed to shoot slugs. It's not designed to shoot pellets. So slugs are where this gun is going to shine. Long range accuracy. So with this gun and the right ammo, you can shoot targets at over 100 yards all day long. The regulator is externally adjustable and it also has an adjustable power wheel. And one of the coolest things about this is as well as being the most powerful air gun out there, you can also dial it all the way down to six foot pounds. So you have between six foot pounds and 80 foot pounds of power. The bullpup design obviously it's 7.25 pounds. The stock is synthetic, 31 inches overall length. It's got a Picatinny rail on top. It does have a fill probe that comes with it. Here's another unique thing about this. Now it's regulated so you could run it at any PSI you want and it's still going to shoot the same but the max fill on this is 350 bar. So one bar equals 15 PSI. Just a little fun fact there. So you can pump this gun up to 5,076 PSI. 5,000 PSI fill. I'll probably be filling mine to 4,500 because that's about what I got going on over here. I'm just going to read you guys the European description of this gun. It's a little bit shorter. The Human K1 is a hammerless semi-automatic PCP air rifle. This air rifle has a 19-shot rotary magazine and the power can be adjusted from 8 to 100 joules. And I checked. 7 joules is 1 foot-pound, so 100 joules works out to 73 foot-pounds. Other features are the integrated silencer, 22 millimeter weaver rail, and the two-stage adjustable trigger. So this is a hammerless system, okay? It doesn't rely on a hammer hitting a valve to release the air. It shoots straight from the magazine, and this hammerless system is way more efficient than a traditional PCP air rifle system. The Huben Rifle's patented hammerless design provides infinite adjustment from very low to very high power. The semi-auto cocking and loading cycle is fast and jam free with a unique 19 shot steel magazine that can be topped up at any time for a fast large volume of accurate shots on target. Sounds good to me. The Huben rifle has been developed to accurately fire solid slugs at an extreme power level for ultra long range target or hunting applications. The rifles tested have performed very well with the heavy pellets in each caliber at the higher power settings. Lower power requirements will give good results with standard weight pellets for plink and fun and vermin control. The Huben is made from the finest high quality components. The air cylinder is tested safe at operational pressure of 5,000 PSI. However, the rifle will operate at pressures down to 1650 PSI, depending on regulator pressure settings and power wheel adjustment. That's handy. The stock of the Huben Bullpup is made of a high quality synthetic and is very comfortable to shoot with a very neutral balance. That's good. The rifle report is very quiet, made possible with a built-in silencing system 
The Huban is very backyard friendly. That's amazing. 80 foot pounds, so they must have a good silencing system inside that shroud. Very nice. Donny FL also offers a one half UNF adapter for this, around 50 bucks. If you guys want to put your favorite LDC on this, on with the description. The Huban rifle is not for the faint of heart. It's a high power air rifle with extreme capabilities and ultra fast rate of fire for long range performance. Sounds pretty awesome. So it's like a sniper gun, but you can also rain down hellfire if you so desire. So that's cool. It kind of reminds me of another gun I know. All right, that's about it for hardcore stats. All right, I just got off the phone with Kelly from crazycool.com. I want to get this stuff down before I forget it. So for slugs, you want to be shooting them around 1,000 feet per second. So you want your regulator pressure or your working pressure actually to be 18 to 19 MPA. If you're shooting pellets, you want them going about 915 feet per second. And for that, you're going to have your MPA pressure between 13 and 14 MPA. So basically 13 to 14 MPA for JSB redesigns does really good at 50 yards, I'm told. Then when you're going to switch to slugs, you bump that up to 18, 19 MPA, and you'll be sending those slugs at 1,000 feet per second, which is what they like. New on the 2020 series, it's got a new regulator and a new barrel. The old barrels from the 2018 series were choked Lothar Walther barrels with a 17-7 twist. The new barrels are made by Huben, and they are non-choked, and they're a 16 and 6 twist. So new barrels and regulator for 2020 series. With the trigger adjustment, there's a teeny bit of travel that you can take out of the first stage. Kelly said a lot of people do that. You just throw the Allen key in there and make a little bit of adjustment. I like mine the way it is, so I'm just going to leave it. Once again, guys, this barrel as well is a .22 caliber. So it's going to do better with the slugs that are closer to that diameter. For instance, the new FX redesigns are too narrow, so they bounce around in the barrel. But we'll go over the top four choices for ammo out of the Human K1. Here we go. These are .218. That's the magic size for the .222 barrels. And these are supposed to fly really good. All right, recommended. Another one are these redesigned 25 grain GSBs, which are pretty, they don't look like that picture right there. They pretty much look like slugs and are slugs anyway. Not really much of a skirt on them. I threw these in there. They're not necessarily recommended, but we're gonna shoot some 33 grains. Now, NSA ammo. They make some Huben slugs, they're called. Huben had their own slugs when the guns first came out. And they had like the highest ballistic coefficient ever. And so those aren't made anymore, but NSA makes something that's basically a clone of the old Huben slugs. And these are going to be the 36 grain Huben slugs right there. And these do have a high ballistic coefficient, not as high as the Hubens, but pretty darn close. You know, still way, way up there. So we'll check those out when we shoot them. And the number one ammo recommended in the forum called the uh, VK Knockers. The guy that makes these is Dale Riggert right there. And he's the guy that makes these varmint knockers. And these varmint knockers, 28.5 grain slugs are supposed to be everybody's favorite to shoot out of their Hubens. I'd like to thank Dale from Varmint Knockers. I emailed him and told him I was doing a Huben video, and he went ahead and sent these slugs out here free of charge. So thanks again, Dale. I really appreciate that. If you want to grab some 28.5 varmint knockers, they're for sale on eBay, so there's a link in the description below where you can grab those. All right, so this valve on the back right here is actually your working pressure. So that's not the pressure in your tank. That is where your regulator basically is set at. So for pellets, we want to set it at... I believe it's between 13 and 1400 which it's at and then when we're ready to shoot some slugs we're going to set it at 18 to 19 MPA and the way you insert the fill probe there's three o-rings on it and this top one's basically going to be sticking flush so if you see that top one just kind of fits on the rim right there and that's it
All right, real quick, before we get started, I had an issue with my power wheel when I first got the gun. So I'm just going to go over it real quick, just in case anyone else has the same issue. When I first got it, my power wheel wouldn't move. And so, what I needed to do... This little power wheel right here came in my bag of small parts. But basically, what you want to do is insert it under the dial... So you want to line this square up with, if you guys can see, this bolt is actually square. So you want to line those two squares up. Do that really carefully. And what that's going to do is you're going to screw this power wheel on now. And that's going to allow this bolt right here to actually, it rises up. It'll rise up and go right through that square hole right there. And then these grooves are what give you your detents. So the most important thing is you have to line these, uh, these things up square. If you don't line them up square, then the thing will get stuck right there. All right, I just equalized the pressure between my tank and my gun. So I should be at 4,500 PSI. My tank was full. Let the pressure out of my air hose. Remove my fill probe. Let's get this party started. Nice calm day. Look at that blue sky behind me. Definitely a good looking gun right there. Today I'm doing something a little different. I got my dad's Caldwell chronograph right there. This one's called the Ballistic Precision Chronograph. It seemed to work real good when we were in the woods the other day. So you can have meters per second or feet per second. The thing I like about it and the reason I'm using it right now is because it has this little doodad that you can plug in. Now I'll turn this on, and it'll shoot ultraviolet light down, so I don't have to worry about if I'm in the shade or not, which is going to be really cool. Okay, I'm mostly using this to see where my power dial is at. We're using Crossman Pirhanas. They have little teeth in them, just like real Pirhanas. I'm guessing that's on uh, low power or something close to it. Alright guys, I just turned the dial like 10 clicks to the other side all the way till it stopped. Wow guys, so there's your uh, 8 foot pounds right there. We are slinging a 14.3 grain pellet on low at 329 feet per second. Almost like playing paintball. Okay, I guess that's just going to turn forever. See what happens. Holy crap. <laughs> okay, so when I click the wheel to the left, it goes all the way until it stops. Now, if I click it to the right, I clicked it about 30 times, and it appears to just keep on going. So let's just do... We're at, that's 300... That right there is 328 feet per second. Let's go 10 clicks up. It's about 10 clicks up and see what we get. All right, I'm going to go back to low power and just go up, I don't know, five clicks. All right, that's, uh, that's a little better. Okay guys, now I'm clicking two clicks down in power. Okay, now I'm clicking one click up. So that's some awesome adjustability right there. I'm liking that. So that's probably right about what I want to be shooting these pellets. All right, this time we got some 18 grain JSB Diabolos. The deer always like to stop by and see which air guns I'm shooting. But this guy was standing right by my target, so I had to wait for him to leave. Okay, here's the first group I shot with 18 grain JSBs. They were only traveling a little over 800 feet per second, but they did pretty good. Wow, that was impressive. It looked like they all went through the same hole. Those were going about 820 feet per second, but look how accurate they were. Let's go down there and check that group out. 
Did you see that shooting bugaboo? Hell yeah! This was 10 or 11 shots. One ragged hole and I don't see the bullseye anywhere. That bullseye's dead, so one out of those 10 to 12 shots. That is really, really cool. That right there was one of these stickers before I started, so I'll leave this target cam down here. Let's do this one, see what happens. If we can nail them. All right, let's do an official group right here. Oh, I gotta remember which one I'm shooting right there. Oh, I'm starting to get nervous. That's a ricochet right there. Oh, I'm out. Nice. That was like five through the same hole with one flyer. Here's that group I just shot. So we see the Huban does just fine with normal 18 grain JSB pellets if that's all you got on hand. Here's that other group that you guys saw me shoot. And right here is 11 shots, 10 of them through the same dime size hole. Pretty nice. Looks like it's 12 or 13 ounces every single time. So there's something that I have to share with you. This sits great when you're shooting in the rifle rest, but uh, when it's just sitting there by itself, it has a tendency to want to tip over. So it'll just be sitting there like that and then it'll just like flop over. So it did that just now and it kind of flopped. It fell on the table and the scope cam pretty much saved it because by the time it was flopped over on the scope cam, I had grabbed it but it knocked a few things off the table. This is where the H&Ns ended up in my dog's dog food water. Good thing I changed his water today. Hopefully these are waterproof. Let those dry off a little bit. All right, when we're ready to shoot some slugs and we want to adjust this, we're gonna adjust that up to 18 or 19, I'm told, and that's gonna get our slugs going about a thousand feet per second, maybe a little faster. So you go down here, and right under here, there's an Allen key, and I believe my gun came with an Allen key that fits that. You're going to turn that screw just a little bit, and you'll see this needle start to creep up. So you just gently adjust that Allen screw behind the grip right there, and that dial will go. So let me get my Allen key, and we'll try it out. All right, that fit in there really easily. Let's see here. This would be counterclockwise. Okay, there it goes. I'm gonna keep turning it counterclockwise and see if I can get us up to right under that 20 right there. Ooh. All right, so that would be 18 right there. All right, I gave it a little more of a turn. I'm gonna shoot a couple times. Hold on. All right, you guys, that's between 18 and 19. I'm loving it. All right, we're ready to shoot slugs. I'm just going to show you real quick my 75-yard shooting results with the three different types of slugs. They all performed pretty similar at 75 yards. I'm just going to start off with the H&N slugs. These were grouping pretty good the other day when I was trying to sight in my other scope. Shit, I just hit my camera. Oh, shit. I just hit my camera. So I like to see still recording. Watch this. All right, so I can still record. I just can't see. 
Oh man, it's gonna be hard to zoom in. So, I nailed my camera, except this camera was only about a hundred bucks. Not like my last ones, which I would pay like $600 for, so. Look you guys, it was a perfect shot right through the uh, play button almost. Anyway, this is about the typical group I got yesterday, which was like about a silver dollar. So, all right, guys, see where it says uh, 35 right there? From 35 all the way to 1 right there. So, from 1 to 35, we have consistent numbers. And then after the 35th shot, it drops off. And that was being filled to 4,500 PSI. All right, guys, now we're going to do some 28.5 varmint knockers. This is 75 yards. We're going to do official varmint knocker group. Just to let you know, I was taking my time in between shots. I just edited them together because it looked kind of cool. All right, there's my group at 75 yards. About the size of a silver dollar, but consistent. Now we'll do an official group next to the uh, H&Ns right there. Possible that 75 yards is not a long enough range for shooting slugs. They may need a little more distance to uh, go to sleep, they call it, where the round stabilizes and starts flying straight. So let's check it out. That looks like a Blair Witch Project, but it's not. It's actually <laughs> a target stand. I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. There we go, and then I could see that from way back there. All right, so at this point I'm down to one camera, and in addition, the scope cameras don't work too good when you're on like 24 power magnification. So I went ahead and did these off camera. Here's the results. Okay, here's my results at 100 yards. The varmint knockers, this is a three inch target right there. So it did about a three inch group. A few outside the target. H&N .218. Pretty consistent at 100 yards. A few flyers right there. But uh, did pretty good. But I think the best and the most consistent was the NSA. They're definitely shiny. And look at that. Now that is a group right there. Super consistent. With really no flyers. So that's 100 yards right there. 3-inch target. Here's a couple more that I took. Same group size. At 100 yards for these NSA Huban slugs. They proved to be uh, pretty darn good. 100-yard group right there. I was able to get my gun up to a full 5,000 PSI with my air compressor. So I'm shooting all these groups on a full tank. Unfortunately, I had my power adjustment wheel turned up way too high. I was dumping all my air. So I was dropping off the regulator after about 10 shots. All right, guys, I got a 150 yard target way out there. I'm gonna have a little sniper mat right here. So you guys, scope cams don't really work on higher magnifications. All right, guys, that's my view at 28 power right there. 150 yards away. By the way, you guys, this is my Halo XL450 rangefinder. Link in the description if you want to get one. It's good out to 450 yards, and I've been using it since I started the Airgun channel. About 89 bucks. All right, guys, we are out here at 150 yards at my shooting range. Hopefully this uh, bunny will uh, get out of here before I start shooting. Mister... Behind this 150 yard range is not a good place to be hanging out. Bro. So, now that we got our bunnies out of the way, 150 yards. Let's do this. All right, guys, I'm going to take five shots on that shoot and see. I'm going to light up this steel. 
may have to refill in between. All right, you guys, five shots on the paper. About three inches right there. That right there is less than an inch. But together, we probably got seven inch group right there. Could be me, I can barely see through my scope because my scope rings are too short. So, here we hit steel a couple times. Uh, I'm gonna air back up and we're gonna do 10 shots at this steel in rapid succession. I hit that guy center. All right, there's our familiar six, seven inch group. So with a little tuning, you might be able to tighten that up, definitely. I don't have time to uh, sit here and tune it and sight it in for all these different kinds of ammo. There's a little idea what you guys can do at a long, long distance. Definitely hit bottles and things like that. Now I'm gonna dial it back down and let's do some JSB redesigned at 50 yards. All right, you guys, so to load the Huben, you make sure you're on safety. Very important with this gun. There's no way to decock it, so that safety button is your lifesaver. Put that lever up like that. These two bays right here, we're going to call them bays. Those are the only two that you can get a pellet in. So you basically go like that, and then you click it forward. Now, you guys, these magazines bays we're gonna call them they are rifled and the rifling is matched up with the rifling in the barrel okay so that's why you can't ever mess with your magazine taking it in and out that's got to be done at the factory or by a service guy the slugs just kind of they kind of snap in it's almost like the magazine is sucking them in but that's because of the rifling I suppose then when you genuinely just pop down that lever and now this is locked in place and you're ready to rock and roll you know how I said that this uh, gun likes to jump off the rifle rests? While I was sitting here putting my target together, I bumped this table with my hip the wrong way. This thing went flying right off. Hit the ground right here on the barrel. And there's the mark. And there's my new barrel. Super fucking annoying. You know what, I'm just gonna leave it up there. All right, let's see if this gun can take a licking and keep on ticking. It's about perfect right there. So about two shots later, my gun jammed. All right, guys, it looks like I did damage the gun. You see that right there? Plastic pushing out. Same right there. So that was a super hard hit, I don't imagine. You could get one much worse. I was able to get a hold of Kelly at crazycool.com. And he actually walked me through, over the phone, how to fix my Huben. Here's what happened. I also learned that you can order a pressure gauge for the front of your air tank, so you can see how much air you have in it. You could even install it yourself. So just get a hold of Kelly over at crazycool.com if you want to order one of those pressure gauges for your K1. Alright guys, I was able to text message Kelly over at crazycool.com. He told me to loosen these 3mm Allen screws and nudge my cheek piece forward and that's what I was able to do. Got that all fixed up and we're back in business. So at one point I turned this dial up, okay? And I turned it many notches seeing how fast I could get my slugs. My slugs maxed out at let's say 1060 feet per second, but it kept opening, I don't really know how to say it, let's just say the airport or whatever. And so what I was doing when I was blowing out more air but I wasn't gaining any FPS. So what I've been doing now is I'm dialing this back down, and sure enough, I did five clicks down. I was still at 1,066. Five more clicks down, that's when my gun jammed. But anyway, I'll keep clicking down 
until I find where I'm actually affecting the velocity. There comes a point, is what I'm saying, where you're not getting any more FPS. You're just wasting more air. And that's why I was losing all my air in 10 shots when I was shooting at 150 yards. All right, you guys, I just shot a varmint knocker at 921 feet per second. Target review is coming soon. And now I can creep that dial back up and get me back up to uh, 1,050 or somewhere around there. So guys, I decided to see what sort of power and accuracy these slugs have at close range oh, before I move on to the redesigns. So we're going to do some 35-yard and 50-yard slug shooting. Check this out. Perfect. I'm going to leave it right there. This target has seen better days. It's been sitting out here for like over a week. All right, you guys, I'm going to send this target to a better place. Oh, dang it. That was badass, though. Wow, guys, that's what's with slugs. <sighs> Freaking awesome. Look at I shot this one into next week and the coating even came off the can. You ever seen that before? This thing's naked. Wow. I don't think that can is okay. Alright. Yeah, you can't even stand up. As expected. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's a double tap right there. So it exploded it and uh, gave it a little extra hole. Unfortunately, I was only able to sit down for a short time. Put about 100 rounds through the gun. Guys, first I just shot like over here on the steel. And I had to click over a little bit. Then I went to 50 yards. Here's my next shot. Right there. 50 yards with the JSV redesigned. I'm not kidding, okay? I wasn't filming it. Then I went up to here. And I kept shooting them through this hole right here. I got 10 or more in here. And then I did a little rapid fire. Got a little sloppy right there. I wasn't able to get exactly 915 feet per second, but by dialing back down to 15 MPA in conjunction with power wheel adjustment, here's a group that I shot when it was going about 940 FPS. There we go guys, 50 yards, not bad, 
like I said, I couldn't get those going exactly 915 feet per second. It seemed like I was either going 940 or around 890, so a few more rounds if you can get those things going exactly 915 feet per second. Probably be doing groups like that all day long. All right, you guys, it's time for me to bounce out of here. Final thoughts on the Huben K1 2020 series. Quite a gun. Very unique. Rather than uh, long-range slug accuracy, I think the strength of this gun is putting 80 foot-pounds on target uh, within 35, 50 yards. So that's uh, over twice what a normal 22 rifle is. Usually about 30 foot-pounds. So we're looking at 80, nearly three times the energy. So... Uh, it's scary. It's a dangerous gun. You cannot decock it. So if there's ammo in there and that safety's off, it's uh, locked and loaded. So you gotta be really careful. Definitely not a gun for kids. Don't buy this for your kid. But yeah, very uh, useful tool inside of 50 yards. Pop a Smurf right there is like. Three eighths of an inch wide, maybe about an inch and a quarter tall. With the ability to put multiple shots and follow up shots on target. So, anyway, guys, thanks for watching. And I want to thank Francisco in Spain for sending me this gun. Ooh, boy, I smacked that one. This is actually a miniature can, but look what it did to it. Pilled it away from the thing, and that right there, double tap at 35 yards. Thanks to all you who have been buying stuff through the affiliate link. I'm going to talk some more about that in the next video and show you guys a little bit about how that works. Alright guys, till next time, happy shooting, we'll see you on the next one.